Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're super excited to show you part of the journey of turning our 2000 and Chevy Kodiak 4500 4x4 into the ultimate adventure rig. We need to do some maintenance and checking things over before we're ready to go. And today we have Bernie, my good friend Bernie from BR Power Source, who's a Duramax specialist to help us check things out on the drive line end. Bernie, tell us about what you do. Hi, we have a diesel repair shop in uh, Southern Ontario in the town of Oakville. And we are specializing in the Duramax applications from 2001 to current. Most of our customers are tow trucks, landscaping companies, and even these big medium duty trucks. Well, Gord, it seems like you have bought a great truck. It's an awesome shape so far. I'm just gonna go over some of the key areas that you wanna watch out for on these specific year models. This is a 2007. You're gonna have a great long life if you follow these few steps. So let's open the hood. First thing we want to do is our straps on both sides. We got our unlatch. No. Nope. Yeah. Right. And then you gotta lean back. It's a good sign that it creaks because it hasn't been opened that much. That's good. <laughs> Here we are, Gord. Um, one thing is key to be able to get at for general maintenance. You want to be able to access your fuel filter and check your oil levels. So easiest ways to remove your cover here. You have two slide clips and it simply comes out and back like so. And we'll put this on the ground for now. So you'll have access to your oil level dipstick, your transmission fluid dipstick and your fuel filter. It also has a water and fuel sensor on the bottom, which you want to make sure the wire is hooked up and you have a primer on top. So if this is a job you want to take tackle yourself, or if you ever run out of fuel, you can prime your fuel system by opening this plastic bleeder screw and pushing down on this plunger until the fuel comes out. Once that happens, you can tighten that, but not too tight and make sure you have no leaks around the housing or anything like that. Otherwise the vehicle will be hard to start, especially after a service. Looks like this is all nice and clean. There's no leaks anywhere. That is a good sign. Also, you want to overlook certain things like your air to air intercooler clamps that they're not loose or there's a lot of seepage from PCV oil here on all ends. Because if these come off while you're driving, it'll feel like your engine lost all its power. So if you ever have that happen, make sure that one of these didn't come off or loose on either side of the vehicle. Secondly, you'll want to maintain your air filter. On this model, they have a vacuum line that goes right inside to the cab that'll tell you the health of your fuel filter. So if it starts showing red, yellow to red, it's time to change that guy. And there's no mileage interval for an air filter. You can get dirty following one car on a dusty road in one day. So always keep an eye on that. Let's go over to the other side. On this side, we've already moved the cover just to show you a little bit of a better view what we're looking for. Uh, we'll start off with our air to air clamps. We'll make sure that they're good on this side as well. And there's a slightly different style of clamp at the engine, which has a circlip. But you can see there's no seepage around here. This is all looking really well. Now, the key component to these, they are known for some electrical issues, and it's more so in the lower parts of the harness. Anywhere where it's low, if you have electrical issues, it's not necessarily the computers or your fuse area. It'll be corrosion in these areas. So this is something you want to watch for or maintain and make sure there's no con uh, collection of water or salt or debris in these areas. Also, under your air intake, there is bracketry that goes right across the truck. There's angles and areas where these can chafe if these locations aren't properly reinstalled after maintenance. But what about this, what about the grounds, Bernie? The ground. I see there's ground straps down there and some ground wires bolted on the frame. Do those ever give you a problem? Yes, I'm glad you asked that. So if you ever have charging problems or unknown engine codes, loss of communication, that's the first place to start. The batteries on this uh, vehicle are very well located. They're kind of protected in that tray under your footstep, but that is always key to keep those clean and uh, rust free for sure. Also, you can also get out all your glow plugs if they ever fail. It's not a bad idea once in a while to put some rust proofing on the ends of the glow plugs and into where they screw into the cylinder heads. So if you do have to replace them one day, they're right there and they come off nicely. Another main one is you want to watch out your positives to complement the negatives. They're very common to get corrosion first, just the way electricity works. So you're going to start seeing a little bit of green there. You want to keep that under control, brush that away and put a a rust proofing or 
WD-40 type liquid on there to keep them moist and keep them from corroding. Seems like we have found a plastic line, or actually this is a rubber line that comes from your air filter to show restriction. Now this one is broken, so we're oh, going to have really to broken. get it replaced because this goes all the way inside to a gauge, which we'll show you when we do some tests inside the truck. Yeah, so this is the line off of the air filter that Bernie was talking about. Look how rotten it is. It's like old licorice. That's we'll just from that age. You can't, you can't do nothing but replace that line. Did you want to taste it? No, okay. it, they, they taste the same whenever they go <laughs> like that, but thanks. So uh, we're looking for this line and I think he goes inside the cab somewhere. Oh, there it is. So, man, it's not, it's, it's horrible. Yeah. So we're going to have to, we'll leave this up here so you can find it later. And it's probably going to hook goes down there somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause your gauge is right in the line with the dash over there. There it is down there. It seems just as bad down here. Yeah, they are pretty tight. Oh, so you're no. going to have to replace this whole line. It looks like quarter inch vacuum hose. And it goes in somewhere yeah. in the heater housing here, I think. Another thing that you're going to want to keep an eye on is your your serpentine belt pulleys. There's two that have no grooves. They're kind of underneath your alternator and beside your belt tensioner. If you ever have a noise or a squeaking noise, 99% of the time it's the bearings in those idler pulleys that are causing the noise more so than any other accessory or the belt. Maybe cheap insurance just to change them before we hit the road. I would highly recommend that and maybe for the little that they do cost, keep a spare set in your toolbox and now's a good time to find a creative way to change them so you're good at it if it ever happens on the road. <laughs> It'll save you a big labor bill. Quite the climb to get into this big truck. It is. So I um, wanted to reiterate again on the air filters, fuel filters, oil filters. I like to stay with original manufacturer's equipment for those. They seem to have the better quality. I'm not saying in a pinch that you shouldn't use aftermarket, but for the most part, those have been the best for longevity. Um, just to touch again on that vacuum line we were talking about earlier, it hooks up to this gauge, which is basically a restriction gauge. So as your air filter would get dirty, it would slowly pull this yellow line to the red. So once you get about halfway, or even if it starts to move, it's a good time just to put a fresh air filter in there. It's simply reset by pressing this yellow button and it drops back to its original position. But right now it'll show clean forever because we have a rotted well, air. Yeah, we have to get that hose changed. For sure. So what I like to go through is I'm just gonna check the general health of the engine using our GM diagnostic scan tools. So we start it up. Runs beautiful. So we're gonna go into the engine control module and we're gonna look at a couple of items. First, we're gonna check for codes, check engine light. We don't have one right now, but sometimes even though the light is off, it may have one in its history or memory, which is good to kind of keep an eye on. Ah, we have one in the history. Let's see what that's all about. Lost communication with instrument panel control. Could have been a fuse or a poor connection. Let's just clear that. Just something that happened in the past at yeah. some point. Yeah. Maybe somebody was working on the vehicle, it became disconnected, it doesn't always throw a light on. If it keeps coming back, we actually have a problem we got to address. And now it's gone. All right, now that that's good, we'll check over a few engine parameters. Everybody talks about fuel injector balance race on the Duramax diesel. It's just a simple test of how the motor is running smoothly. And it's a way that the computer can kind of use a little bit of fuel by adding and removing a certain amount to balance the engine from one cylinder speed to the next. So if you had a cylinder that wasn't performing as well as the other cylinders, it would have to compensate and you'd see that in your numbers? Absolutely. I'm going to go and sh have a look at that right now. We will scroll down to that area. And they have an, a value of plus or minus in millimeters cubed. That's just a, an amount of fuel up to seven or 15, depending on the year, make and model. So if you had an injector that was restricted and it was missing on that cylinder and that cylinder was slow, you would see a high positive number for the computer trying to add fuel to that cylinder. 
And if you had an injector sticking or overfueling, you would see a large negative number and the motor would not run as smooth and be as bounced. These numbers are well within spec. Usually plus or minus four to six at idle is okay. I'd like to stay under three if, if it's possible, but you can tell how easily it starts and runs. Next step would be to check your fuel pressure. And why we do this is we want to see the health of your injection pump. This is the heart, what makes all the fuel pressure, makes all the power in your engine, drives your turbo, overall health of the truck. Everything starts with a healthy fuel pump. So what we can do is we can command it to full rail pressure. And in PSI, that's about 26,000 pounds per square inch and around 4,000 at idle to get it started. So this, this scanner reads in megapascals. So 30 is around the 4,000 PSI and 180 is your 26,000 PSI. So we're going to increase this. It's going to change the sound of the engine. And we're seeing the actual sensor and what it's wanting. So it's following along. The number below is absolutely perfect following along the top number. Now, if you had a weak pump, you would have a separation between those two values. And the motor slightly makes a different noise. So now we know this fuel system is very healthy and we can exit out of this. Any other questions, Gord? Um, the, yeah, this truck doesn't have um, a, a lot of an emission system. It doesn't have de or, uh, diesel exhaust fluid. Does diesel exhaust fluid? Correct. Yes, but it has um, it has a regen system. Yes, it does, and it's the generation one of the uh, emission system. So you have an active EGR, you have a catalytic converter, and you have a diesel particulate filter. And after so many kilometers of driving, usually 800 to 1,000 kilometers, or after so much soot has accumulated in the DPF filter, it does a regen. It's basically like a self-cleaning oven. So it reburns that soot into ash. And this does it automatically. It won't always tell you when it's doing it. You may notice that you've come to a stop and your idle is 150 or 200 RPM higher than normal in a warm condition. That means it's simply trying to finish its job. So this is something that we've checked on the uh, system as well. So we can go into this parameter and look at how often it's done it. So yeah, far. We, we went through this test yesterday and um, we did a regen and Bernie wanted to see how it went, how the numbers went, and then how it, basically the numbers at the end, right? Told you what Correct. kind of health it was in. Correct. Which, um, you know, it took, 30, 40 minutes to get through the whole test when right. we did it. So we're not going to show you that. No. But it, we did determine that. Bernie said everything looks great. Yeah. So after you perform a service regen, you can watch your temperature sensors and you can see how much soot is left when the process is completed. So if it's under 10 grams, that's a sign that the vehicle is very healthy. Uh, Gord's, when it recovered, was two to three grams. And that's, that's as good as a new system. Um, it actually builds up until it gets around the 45 grams of soot calculated and then it'll slowly initiate the regen while driving and the temperatures are where they need to be to have this happen. And also I'd like to touch on at this age of vehicles, it's very important that you have good functioning thermostats because there's two of them in this vehicle. If they are stuck in the open position just due to age, it'll take a long time for the vehicle to get to operating temperature. Two things happen, clogs your emissions, engine takes longer to warm up and it just doesn't run as efficient it costs you mileage so i would recommend oem thermostats every five to ten years but uh, you would notice that the temperature gauge would go close to the middle and slowly come back if they're working properly if it never gets really warm after a long day driving they're probably stuck in that open position what about fuel i think these newer diesels even though this one isn't that new but it's new enough that um, you want to make sure you get good fuel, right? Absolutely. I always recommend going to the more major brands for fuel. And everybody thinks that a lot of people seem to think that diesel doesn't matter. I can just run anything. And that's true on some of the older uh, diesel transports and so on. Uh, I think it's really important that you run fresh quality fuel. Go to the name brand stations. And um, another little tech tip, if you see the fueling truck there, you might want to wait a day before you get fuel there, just in case you get the stuff out of the bottom. So then you'll see a water and fuel light on, come on or something like that.
And if you see water and fuel light, that you have to change your filter? I would stop immediately because there'll be a lot there to make that come on. I shut the vehicle off. I would physically remove it. And, and the water is always heavier than diesel, so it'll come out of the filter first. So when you do a service, that's a good idea to maybe pour it in a bowl and you can see if there's any separation or contamination in the fuel. Or ask your mechanic to do that when they throw a filter on. I think we'll travel with a spare filter just in case. Absolutely. So another thing with the fuel quality thing, well, we're going to go to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Are we going to find good fuel down there? Or is there going to be issues? Um, it would be good to do a little bit of research what uh, the major stations would be, but um, it might not hurt to have a good additive like a Stanodyne, something that works with the uh, Duramax fuel system. I'm not an advocate of additives unless you get into that situation, and usually I stay away from them. But that might be a good idea to have a good quality one with you. Maybe you can see if your dealer carries something like that. Bert, you know what? I think you did really well on purchasing this vehicle. Um, everything seems to be top shelf. I kind of, uh, kind of really like it. <laughs> and I love the horn too. Anyway, you'll have a fun time with this. These are good for about a million miles if you do all your maintenance and watch their simple things. Congrats. That's, that's awesome. Thanks for the inspection, Bernie, and uh, sharing all your wisdom with us. Um, if anybody is in the Southern Ontario area and needs, um, has, has problems with their Duramax or just wants to get it looked over to avoid having any problems, be sure to check out BR Power Source. We'll have their info in the description. Let them know the Time Is Now Adventures sent you. If you like this video and maybe got some good information from it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to see some more behind the scenes content, check us out on Patreon. Bye. <laughs> you want to uplift you? That goes in. Please do. That's another channel. You just have to pull the engine out to get at it? Yeah. I hope not. Oh, we're on film again. Hang on. Okay. I don't see a red light up there yet. Cut! I'm not going to say small.